Hello beer tubers and welcome to the Master of Hoppets Top 10 Best Beers of 2020. The year that we will never forget. Not just because of great beer, but also because of very bad things happening around the world. Especially, you know, the COVID situation. We're not going to dive into that. You know, everyone has not had the best of years this year. And there's been many lockdowns and all these things. But all in all, in terms of beer, we still had great times. We still, you know, we still got to hang out with some friends. We still got to see some family. We still got to enjoy great beer and great food and whatnot. Under different circumstances, but you know, we persevered. Everyone did, you guys did. So here's to a 2020 that's gonna be much better or 2021 that's gonna be much better than 2020. But you know, in terms of beer, this has been a great year. Cheers and coffee. Mm. So we had a humongously great year this year. Uh, we did a few trades. Uh, no, actually we didn't, not until the end of the year, now that I think of it. And that you're not going to see the video of the beers we trade or the beer we traded for until next year. You know which one I'm talking about, BBT from Side Project. My number one must try beer. But we got so many crazy releases of beer in Europe from um, like American breweries. Also from European breweries and whatnot. But there was, it, it was nuts, like Fremont was all over the place in Europe this year, which was nuts. So we got loads of Fremont, loads of cycle brewing. It was crazy. So I think it's been a great beer year, even though we haven't been able to go to festivals and uh, you know beer events, go to the bar, all that stuff that you guys enjoy doing and I enjoy doing. We haven't been able to do it the same way, but we've had to, you know, we've been able to experience some amazing beer still and have great times with friends, either close friends you already were seeing or online via live streams, whatever. We did a lot of live streams this year compared to previous years, and we're gonna do more for sure uh, when time allows it. It's been fun, it's been a great year. So we're, we've got, as always, a list of runner-ups before the top 10 and the cavalcade of uh, beers that made it to the top 10 this year. And actually, for the first time in a long time, the number one is a shared position between two beers. But you'll see that eventually. All beers on the top 10 list this year had to get at least a 98 to be on the top 10, which is pretty dope. We gave a lot of good grades, but we didn't give a lot of crazy high grades. And we also didn't give a lot of 100s. We only gave four 100 out in 2020. That is nuts. We had a lot of amazing beer, but not that many that just, you know, got to that point where you're totally mind blown. But I think we've also been a little bit more critical maybe, but we had some great stuff. So the runner ups here, I just want to mention some of them that were fantastic, that definitely needs to be mentioned. The list is going to be below the video as well, as long as, the, as, as well as the top 10. First off, I want to mention Avery's Uncle Jacob Stout, a classic barrel aged imperial stout from the US. I've wanted to try it for years. I tried it with just Michael. He was, or just, or Michael. He was kind enough to share with me. Uh, yeah, it was a fantastic beer. We've got Verdant Putty from 2020, still one of my favorite European double IPAs. We've got Siren and Jay Wakefield's Dark and Perilous, Perilous Nights. This was very close to get on the list, but it was one of the best barrel aged releases in Europe I had this year. Uh, we got Treehouse in numerous haze variants. We got Super Typhoon, Double Ganger, and J -J -J Julius on the list. Those were amazingly, perfectly well balanced IPAs. And they're not on the list because I just kind of reviewed them, but I still want to put on at least bomb automatically from Monkish. I think Monkish for me is the best brewer for haze. The balance of esters and crazy hop centric flavors and whatnot, and dankness and slight bitterness is perfect. Uh, Barrel Souls, a new brewery to me that really shown this year. Uh, honorable mention to Bourbon Barrel Age Teotihuacan, that was dope. Honorable mention to Mickler San Diego Brandy Barrel Age Trapeau, that was very close to making it on the list. And also a shout out to Bourbon County Brand Stout with the vertical tasting. And the 2019 is the one that gets a shout out because it was the best one of the bunch. Uh, North Bruin and Premier Hops Triple Hop Triple IPA, amazing European Triple IPA, amazing flavor. Um, actually rated as well as putty. So that was amazing stuff. Then also uh, some Lambic, Clefontaine and Cuvée, Amanda Gaston, Blend 57, that was in a battle against Jester King's Spun Beer. That was one of the best gooses I've had this year, and it was a shelfie. The Amanda Gaston gooses can be fantastic, or are. Then we got the uh, Andromeda collab between Omnipoyo, Three Sons and Bottle Logic. It was one of the best Omnipoyo releases this year that also deserves a mention. 
crazy hype barrel-aged stout that wasn't too fake and pastry, which was great. Uh, Vernon Allen, another great, you know, hazy IPA. And a lot of people said that this was better than uh, Putty, previously also named Howl. Then we got Cycles Thursday, which was a Cycles and Plus, but in br apple brandy barrels. I thought that was phenomenal. It was very close to be on the list, but it didn't make the cut. But I think that was one of the better ones this year. Other halves, Triple Broccoli Reserve, another hazy beer that was just phenomenal. And then Treehouse Double Chuck. More, pretty, almost like perfect coffee stout. And also, like this was also super close to get on the list, but it didn't make it. Nakis Cognac Stormark Porter. Old school, hype, fantastic beer, Asian cognac barrels. We have another vintage of the bourbon one to try next year with that, along with the Swedish Oak. I'm very excited, courtesy of Johan. Thanks, man. And then we have, of course, also mentioned Thomas Hardy vintage uh, ale number, uh, Thomas Hardy's ale, vintage 2008. That was one of the biggest surprises as for aged beer. That it aged gracefully, it drank on par with hype barrel aged barley wines. That's something I urge you guys to try. It's not something you find easily, but some places in the world that's still is something you, you'll be able to get. It's the O'Hanlon's batch of Thomas Hardy. And for me, that's worth a shot for sure. Evil Twin Double Barrel Jesus has to be mentioned. Fantastic, this is 2000 vintage, uh, 2015 vintage, slightly more old school barrel aged beer. Kane's picture in reverse, definitely needs to mention. That was phenomenal, the 18th first release aged gracefully. Brett loved it too and he was like, well, how is this so low, low rated? It's because it's multi-dark beer. It's not all the time that they get as high as the stouts or like, you know, old ale, barley wine, something like that. Sometimes it's just lower. It was one of those beers that when they released it, it just sat in the fridge. Uh, because they had stouts and all this stuff, so people didn't bother. That's why I got to get some when I was in the States two year, or back in 18. Then Fremont Rusty Nail, the 1990 uh, or 1990, 19. 1990, it's because it's the 19 vintage, the 2019 vintage, phenomenal, uh, old school meets new barrel age kind of character stout with licorice and smoke malt and whatever, amazing, cinnamon too, uh, that was my favorite of the whole vertical we, we did, then also another shout out to uh, Miguel San Diego for their bourbon barrel aged vanilla shake, because that was pretty much taking me back to having the original barrel aged vanilla shake, which was fantastic, it was Exactly there on par, but it didn't make the cut, unfortunately. Then also a new brewery to me for Hazy Beer, Electric Brewing, Sorcerers and Fiends. That was also phenomenal triple IPA. Um, it definitely made me want to try more Electric Brewing. Then we got Westbrook's Maple Barrel Age, 7th Anniversary Chocolate and Sea Salt Imperial Stout. I don't know, you know, how this made it to Europe, but it was just one of those random releases. It was like, what? Okay, cool. And it was dope. It was so chocolatey. Perfectly accompanied by fudgy bourbon and then hints of solemnity. Great stuff. Um, Fremont's Bourbon Barrel Aged Dark Star. It was kind of like Bourbon County. Same vibes. Uh, it was fantastic. Just a bit sweeter and odier. Amazing. So close to make it to the cut. Then also Fremont, uh, Monkish and other halves. Uh, JFK to LAX in the Clouds. One of the best hazy IPAs of the year as well. And lastly, Mikla Bauhaun Krieg Vanille. That was a dope... Danish uh, stout cherry, Morello cherry sour beer with vanilla beans. Amazing stuff. So those were the runner-ups. I also want to give a quick mention actually, even though I didn't give it as high a grade, which I kind of regret, but uh, Great Notion Afterglow, I think that's the best West Coast IPA I had last year. That was phenomenal. I could drink that by the bucket. So that also needs a shout out. But that's a list of runner-ups guys. Here it goes, the top 10 best beers I had this year. It's gonna be a little long video with a cavalcade of shots here, but hope you will enjoy it nonetheless. Have a great 2020 New Year's. Have a great 2021 once it starts. Probably around the upload of this video, maybe before, we'll see when I put this up. But yeah, here's to a great 2021 and some more amazing beers in the new year. Cheers guys and see you in 2021. Mmm. Ah, sweet Jesus. Holy shit, that's good. Wow. It's been a long time since I'm going I'm... in for another sip instantly. It's been a long time since I've had a beer and this is a great beer. Well, I've had beer at work, you know, just taste testing, but not tasting, but oh wow. It's so juicy and bright, and then it ha has that like West great, Coast grapefruit. Thing. It's like grapefruit snap, yes. and pine. It's like exactly. Really, like that grapefruity piney, yeah. almost like a resiny even. Yes, it is. It is actually resiny. It's very interesting. Yeah. I didn't expect that, but 
I think but it's, it's been a super long juicy. time since I've had a monkish beer too, like over a year. But I remember them being like yeah, this. Yeah, like from the West Coast. Like yes, and that was also the thing we talked about with the very first one we had. That one was also super bright mm-hmm. and juicy, but it had that pithy West Coast yeah. finish. Mmm. Oh. oh, dude, that is fucking awesome. Yeah. Holy shit! This is one of the best European barley wines I think I've ever had. Yeah. This is still a shelfie in Europe. Yeah. It's crazy, you can buy it on several web shops. Fuck, that's tasty. Wow. It's so fudgy. Yeah. And caramelly and mm-hmm. bourbon forward. Yeah. Again, the bourbon barrel is just perfectly placed in the mix. Perfectly. Toasty, woody. Yeah. Fudgy vanilla caramel Some chocolate. Toffee. Yeah, it's yeah. like this raw kind of coconut nibby thing. Almost slightly nutty. Not slightly, it is definitely yeah. nutty, I think. <laughs> like almost yeah. like honey glaze yeah. hazelnuts yeah. or something like that. Yeah. Mm. Wow. That is very impactful. <laughs> uh, Compared to what we just had. Yeah, it's just that fresh versus extra. aged. The barrel character in this is insane. Yeah. I think this is fuck. That's crazy. I've always character. said I preferred beer fresh. Aftertaste right now is so much butterscotch top. Yeah, yeah. Butterscotch, yeah, like literally diacetyly butterscotch. It tastes like fucking Werther's Originals, mm. but it's perfect in this kind of beer. But the barrel just keeps on going yeah. with this beer. Wow. It's just. But it. I think so this is, toasty and caramely and. Yeah, that this works. is a, a, another ex- example. Sorry for Toffee. interrupting. Toffee. Yeah. It's another example of like your aroma is nice, but the flavor is mm. just like it gets mm. you. It, it gets you. Mm. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. Oh, that, that is, is so, good. so delicious. That is totally like a beer version of like a Starbucks fucking coffee drink. Yeah. Oh, oh man. man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Fuck that is. It so is good. that medium roast coffee? Yeah, medium roasted coffee. <clears throat> but I still think it has like nutty es- espresso and... vibes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But and usually espresso is you know harder yeah roast. harder yeah harder roast. But I don't think it's as like bitter mm. as uh, at least a lot of espressos are. And the perfect amount of lactose. It's sweet yeah. but not too sweet. Yeah. Definitely more oh. combination. Yeah, but wow, what a nice coffee character. Exactly. Oh, wow, man. what a nice coffee character. Mm. Ooh, I got a hint of licorice there, and then like it's this more nutty, nutty because of yeah, the... Yeah, the coffee makes oh. it really nutty. Yeah. And it's more, it's because really of the nutty, coffee, yeah. and then also the charry barrel, it's a little less caramelly yeah. and fudgy. Yeah. And a lot more combination. I swelled and mine quite a bit. I don't think, I don't it's, think a it's a lot more. more, but there's a little bit uh, more. Then the bottle magic one? Uh, oh, sorry, the fundamental <laughs> of me. Yeah, I, I, I swelled mine a bit to get rid of it. So it is really I, I, fizzy on the tongue. No, I'm, I'm not getting this much is of that. Really good. Really good. The vanilla is definitely also there, but I think the coffee is a little bit more dominant than vanilla on the flavor. Um, a little bit more boozy. Maybe a little bit more hot, but it's I also am. yeah. It's also the other one aged for a year. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But it doesn't bother me. It's just no, it no, tastes like bourbon good. spirit. It ain't so Fuck. balanced. Oh, 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 that is fucking dope. Yeah. More brewers need to use this. That's so balanced. It's crazy balanced. It's crazy intense on the cherry, the, the black cherry flavor. The thing is, it reminds me a lot of the uh, Mikla Bauhelm Stelmspar releases but i think this is more balanced and maybe has a bit more depth definitely and it's not it doesn't have like this acidic vinegary no no acidic none vinegary. of that it's crazy well balanced yeah. it's like lambic balance yeah it is this is like kanchong it reminds me very much of the kanchong kind of balance yeah and it's because it's, it's, it's more sour yeah for sure when it comes to fruited yeah yeah, yeah. 
Lambic. Yeah. The fuck the cherry flavor. Yeah. So like super cinnamony and almondy and vanilla like with like this like really strong depth of cherry. And I feel like the reason why it's also really amplified is because they, they put it in a public like, state yeah. cherry wine barrel. Yeah. So you have like like cherry woody, almost like cherry wood flavor. Cherry mm. wood. Like yeah, if yeah. you do barbecue, that like sweet yeah, yeah, wood. Yeah. yeah. Mm. <laughs> Yeah, that is. Oh my god. Holy shit. That is so intense. Yeah. But the so alcohol balanced. is non existent. Yeah. Holy shit. So that's balanced. utterly sweet honey. Yeah. Bourbon, bourbon, fudgy, and caramely. Verdos original. It has that <laughs> like caram caramelized. I think it's way better than Verdos. Yeah, but, yeah, but it has that ca kind of caramel yeah, like flavor to it. Yeah, but I don't feel like there's butterscotch. No, but it. it Verdos is a butterscotch. Yeah. Or butterscotch. Yeah. Mm. Isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Fuck. I think so. But I think it's just. This is insane bar like wine. Mm. This is on like on level with the um, the one we had uh, from Perennial, the new one. It Blue is Ridge. so sweet. My God, this is sweet. But it's a nice sweet. Yeah, it's nice. It's sweet. like really sweet caramel right. malt. It's almost like chewing on like super fresh caramel, sweet caramel yeah. malt, with, like drenched in caramel and bourbon. Yeah. Oh. oh, that is so fucking delicious. Oh, and like, it just hangs on. And the thing is, it's a drinkable pastry style. Yeah. It's not overtly sugar watery or like sweet or it's like not like thick and oh. hefty. It's full bodied and creamy. Mm. And the hazelnut of bourbon. just like lingers forever. Yeah, like right now it's just like new total Nutella flavor. Yeah, fuck, it's so good. Wow, so much barrel character. Like this fudgy, so this is like this candy bourbon. Yes, Super it's almost chocolate. like a Mississippi mud pie. Yeah, Mississippi mud pie, honey brownie mixed with like Nutella on top. Yeah, <laughs> smear it all over. Oh shit! Wow, that's a beer that you really want to sit and think about. It's not something you just want to sit and slug back a few sweeps. No. You really want to, you, like, it is so complex. Mm. I love how charry it is. Like the charry kind of, like char, almost like charry chocolate or something. Yeah, like the um, charriness of it really helps cut a lot of the sweetness because it is a sweet beer. 14% yeah, not really uh, Right now, it just lingers with yeah. that toasty, charry Esque barrel character. But it's, not, it's not intensely charry. It's slightly, almost like, like a slight kind of charry smoke burn. Not really as in like in, in like smoky beers, but it kind of like you know just like almost like just a slight char of a, of a barrel. It also, just but sometimes that charriness when when you have that sweetness up front, it reminds me again of hazelnut. We've talked a lot lot about that hazelnut thing you can get from. Like the barrel, you know, that wow. woody thing reminds me of hazelnut because hazelnut has a bit more sweetness. This is the best rum barrel aged yeah. beer I've ever had. Yeah. <laughs> oh man. Holy fucking tit fucking shit. Fuck. That is so good. That might be one of the best beers I've had all year. Yeah. We're not that far in since 2020, no. but <laughs> yeah, holy in a long time. fucking shit! I almost want to call the grade right now. I am fucking, I am sold instantly. Yeah. Hundreds. <laughs> I'm gonna call it right now, and I am talking about the beer. That's an insta hundred for mm. me. This takes a lot of people think this too sweet. Fuck no, not for me. This is like beat is like it's got that like that big fudgy party wine thing. This is the best blended beer. I've ever had, like in terms of where you blend different styles. Oh uh, yeah, different styles. Yeah, yeah. like if you, that's fuck. This is insanely yeah. good. It is like really upfront. It's like maple vanilla. Yeah, it's like that craziness. And, and, but then it goes into sugar. that charry tobacco. Yeah. And I finish. think that helps cut the sweetness. Yeah. Like right now in the afters, I'm sitting with like this really charry, like, almost like a character. hazelnutty finish. Yeah, know? I can see that. Like really hazelnutty. Yeah. Like raw hazelnut. And it's where the awesome. fuck is the alcohol on this? Yeah, <laughs> it's fucking like dangerous. <laughs> 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 
Wow. <laughs> Holy shit. That is pretty damn crazy. Fuck. We could have split this three people. Oh, but I'm shit. Man. This is so it, fucking intense. And it just goes and on and, and on yeah. and on. It's still and going on with flavor. <laughs> it's super caramelly too. Yeah. Like really like fudgy caramelly. Like one of the most fun of chocolate. Yeah. And also a ton of bourbon. Yeah. Like huge bourbon flavor, but like sweet fudgy, like the yeah. candy bourbon, like. This is nuts. Mm -hmm. Literally, it's like so. I can. Uh, I don't even know how to speak anymore. No. This is like it really. It's it's endless ending was nice and more classic, but this is just going like all nuts with like yeah. fun things. Fantastic. I urge you guys to go out and get some ten years. Yeah. This is fucking check jokes. out it's, Anchorage new stuff. It's yeah, like, they're just killing it and again they're fa fairly easy to get i mean it's been released in europe a lot of stuff has been out in the states and taver and stuff so you can also it's trade. crazy the level of these beers compared to how, how much well is. you know distributed it is yes. that's you know you don't get that's beer. pretty much dream scenario for yeah. a beer geek yeah so you don't have to trade like nuts and all exactly that. but yeah fantastic let's end it there so yes. one of the best top three this year so if you guys had a chance to try anchorage brewings 10 years that's what we thought of it. Here's the 10 years of Anchorage and 10 years of the Master of Hobbits here on YouTube. Yeah. Amazing stuff. And as always, remember to come subscribe to the Facebook fan page and Twitter and Instagram. Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Ring the bell for future notifications about videos. And we're going to say cheers in World Class Beer. Yeah. And see you guys in the video.